We'll start off with D Led. All right, D Led, you get to lead it off. Make sure I'm unmuting myself there, coach. Um, hey, coach, I, the game like um, Dallas, uh, what are some teaching tools you, you were pulled out of that? One to, to, you're, break, uh, you're breaking up a little bad. Okay. I, 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 the, I couldn't hear the question. Okay. Um, I'll go slower. Maybe that'll help. Uh, what are some of the teaching points um, that you took out of the game to to to, to give back to your team here uh, moving forward into this game? Well, the big teaching tools were the mistakes that we made. We had a couple of mental errors in zone coverage, uh, our technique in man coverage. There were some things like that. Um, we had some chances to make some plays and we didn't make them. So, you know, it's just like any week, whether you win, whether you lose, there's always goods, there's always bads. And what you got to do is try to improve on the things that you did bad. And then some of those, those are some of the things that we didn't do well and we need to improve on. Thank you, coach. Yep. Michael Rothkin. Hey, hey, Dean, you miss us? You miss being in front of us today? Yeah, I do. I do. I always miss you. Especially uh, like Tori. Like Tori's, you know, Tori's my favorite. You know that, don't you? I, oh yeah, I, I've, I've, I fully accept this. <laughs> uh, I'm curious, when it comes to the pass rush, how did you feel like Dante fared in his first game back? I don't know that we got a heck of a lot of opportunities. The ball got out pretty quick. Um, you know, he, he did okay. I mean, nobody did great. Nobody did. Terrible. It was just kind of we we just we when we did get there we didn't cover very well and when we did cover very well we didn't get there so it was a combination of everybody it wasn't just one wasn't the front wasn't the back end it was a combination of all of us so and we made some you know again we made some errors that we just shouldn't make and and we just got to learn from that and build on that but I mean he did okay did as good as anybody else. You had talked last week about how New England's offensive playbook is this massive thing in your playbook is a pretty massive thing. Having worked in new England, is there some sort of advantage or maybe disadvantage because bill knows you pretty well that can happen? I, I don't think so. And, and really it was 2009 was the last time I was there. I mean, that's a long time ago. A lot of things have changed. I mean, Josh is still there and all that stuff, but you know, there's been a lot of changes. Uh, a lot of changes in personnel. I mean, there's almost nobody. The only, the only guy there is a special teamer that was there when I was there. And so, you know, not really. It, it's just I kind of know what they can do. I don't know how they're going to do it or what they're going to do, but I kind of know in a way how they're going to do it, and maybe he knows that about us too. So, But it's not – I don't think there's any real big advantage, no. Thanks. Thanks. Yep. Tori? Dean, I'm going to get a mug that says Dean's favorite on it, and I'll bring it to the next press conference. <laughs> no, no, no. So I'll, I'll ask my question. Um, what's, what's kind of the dialogue that you have with a guy like Avery Williams where it, it really seemed like Dallas was kind of going after him a little bit with CD? I mean, what's kind of the dialogue that you have with, with a rookie like that? Well, you just the, the biggest thing is he's, he's so young, and it's just what got him in trouble. Is, first of all, they have four very talented receivers. And we tried during the game at one point in time to actually see if we could match up. But the problem was is that it, it's hard to do that um, when you don't practice it. You know, we lost Hawkins right before the game started. So we kind of had a thing going there with him, but that didn't, obviously that didn't pan out. Um, so it just, um, you just got to keep reassuring reassuring him and just telling him, you know, it's going to get better, but you just, you really got to find, you it goes back to fundamentals. You just got to play great technique, whether you're in zone, whether you're a man. They're, they're a talented group of receivers. And really, whether we had him on him or we had him on Cooper or we had him on Wilson, they all were talented. I mean, you can say, okay, we'll match this guy up on him. Well, they've got three other ones that can't match him up on all of them. So it's just um, the biggest thing is that, like I told you guys the other day, everybody learns from their mistakes. And so hopefully he'll learn from things that we talked about this week on why certain things happen to him, and, and hopefully he'll improve on that. 
I'm glad that you brought up uh, Jalen Hawkins and kind of having to adjust the day of to not having him. I mean, what kind of adjustment did you did you feel like y'all had to make when when you kind of knew like that he wasn't going to be out there at all? Well, it's just it's it's anytime you take somebody out of alignment, and especially a guy that to me is he's a starter. Right? He may not necessarily start the game, but I consider him a starter in a rotation. And the thing of it is, what it does is then, you know, all of a sudden you can't move somebody else to a position. Like, for example, if we were getting hurt at nickel, I could easily have moved Eric Harris back up to nickel. He played there, you know, a week ago. But we couldn't do that because all of a sudden Eric and Duran got to take all the reps at safety. So you couldn't move. That's what it kind of does is it's it's a depth issue more than it is necessarily a whole scheme issue. Sometimes you just you're kind of you just got you got what you got. And so, you know, the guy's got to play and and sometimes you'd like to take a guy out of a game and talk to him a little bit about what's going on, but you really don't have that much opportunity because there's nobody to take him out to talk to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and just one more for me. Um, with with Bill Belichick, you, you guys go way back. Is there kind of something that you've learned about him that maybe people don't don't know of, maybe some stories that you could share about your time with him? Well, I don't know if there's any – you know, really stories about him that I would necessarily share, but it's just, you know, I have the tremendous, tremendous respect for the man. I mean, he's, if not the best football coach ever in the NFL, he's certainly among the top couple. And the thing that I just have told our team and to, or told the defense at least is that he can beat you so many different ways. I mean, they can run the ball and win a game. They can throw the ball and win a game. Um, I've seen it firsthand where we went, they went into games and went empty the whole first quarter and went no huddle. And, you know, now it's looked like they, they run the ball, you know, a lot and all these two back formations that we haven't seen. And then, but I said, but don't surprise that he could come out and throw the ball every down for the first 10 downs. I'm just telling you, they, they can change overnight. And, uh, it's just, there's been so much continuity there that, with him and Josh and and those guys and Ivan Fears and they just uh, they just kind of regroup. Awesome, thank you. You bet. And for me, Coach, of course, this is a short week this week when you get ready to play New England. How would you describe your team eagerness just to get back on the field, especially with it being a short week than usual? Well, I think you know whenever you lose and whenever you lose and really feel like you played poorly you, you really can't wait to get back because you just feel you got to get that taste out of your mouth and so we just got to go back out and, and prove that we're a better team than what we showed last week so I know it's a short week it's a tough week for the players a tough week for the coaches you got to get but it's it's tough on the other team too and so it's it's not like we're the only ones that had a short week so is New England so and they got to travel here so it's just you can't wait to really kind of get back out there and I think the players feel that way too. Um, you kind of touched on Dante Fowler a little bit. He's coming back into, you know, game and his form and everything. What do you think, most importantly, he, he, um, he'll he be able to bring during this point in the season where, you know, right now in this point in the season? Well, we just, you know, we need him to be, you know, the guy that, that we think he can be. We need him to be a pass rusher guy that can set, you know, come on the edge and, and be one on ones. I mean, that's what we need him to be. And uh, you know, that that's why he was brought here a couple of years ago. And and that's what we need him to be. And so hopefully he's healthy now and and he can provide it for us. Because right now, you know, we we're struggling there. I mean, it's no secret. I mean, I'm not making anything up. I'm not upset with anybody. I'm not disappointed. It is what it is. And you know, but we got to provide more pressure on the quarterback. And it can't always be with the pressure. You know, we pressured last week. Right, we had two guys on that one touchdown pass. We had two guys free to hit the quarterback. I don't know if anybody saw the play, but you know, if ball gets off, then you got to be able to cover them. So it's both. It's not just pressure. Pressure isn't always, you know, the answer. And we've tried doing that, and sometimes we don't get. And when we don't get there, it's it's not pretty sometimes. So it's just we need him to provide a presence out there on the edge that can just can rush the passer. That's what we need. Chris Rim. Coach, when you when you watch the Patriots on film um, and their offense, are, is there anything that stands out to you um, about the way they play that that other teams don't do? Yeah, they're physical. 
here's the thing about their running backs, okay? If you watch their running backs and you watch the film, what Bill Belichick tells those guys and what Ivan Fears, who's the running back coach and has been there for 20-some years, what they tell those guys to get a first down, they aren't trying to get a touchdown. They are, but they're trying to get a first down. You ever watch them? They don't jump cut. They don't try to take a six-yard gain and turn it into a 30-yard gain. They take a six-yard gain and try to make it into a nine- or ten-yard gain, and sometimes that'll turn into a bigger gain. They run down hill they aren't looking to avoid contact i mean if you watch them they are straight ahead no fair dodging i mean that's what they do and that's why they just grind it out and grind it out and grind it out you know sometimes you'll see a running back break through the line he's going to try to make a, a big play and then he gets tackled trying to make a bigger play bill doesn't coach that way ivan doesn't coach that way it's going i'm going straight ahead north and south and you're going to have to tackle me and get me down. And if you watch them on film, that's exactly how they play. It's physical. Justin Felder. Hey, Dean, I'm going to mess up his quote, but Matt Ryan said after the game, you know, you have to take advantage of a game like what happened in Dallas and learn from it. Otherwise, it's an opportunity wasted. What do you think is the biggest lesson you want your defense to take away from that game in Dallas? You can't make mental mistakes. You can't make, we, we made a couple of mental mistakes in that game that hurt us in zone. So therefore, then when you come back, you, you try calling a little bit of man coverage, which really I did not want to call very much of in that game based on their receiving core. But, you know, all of a sudden I'm not real comfortable with two mental errors that we had in zone coverage that we play every day. So now I'm kind of thinking, okay, what do I got to do here? So then I go to man and that wasn't the answer. And I knew it wasn't the answer for the game. And, I, you know, I can be mad at myself, for it, but I feel like that's the thing. What happens is it gets you kind of off rhythm. It gets you off of what you really wanted to do in the game, how you wanted to call the game. You know, you want them to go the long, hard way. You want them to do all that stuff. Um, and all of a sudden you feel like, okay, I got to take a little bit more of a risk, which usually doesn't pan out. Because if I thought it was that way to begin with, I would have, you know, I would have planned the game plan that way. So to me, that's what we got to take from it. We got to take that. We just got to do our job. Everybody is assigned a job. And every profession in this world, everybody's got a job to do to make the company work and successful. And the way we have to do it, all 11 guys do their job, not somebody else's. When you start taking chances, which that's why we had the mental errors, somebody took a chance thinking, I'll go make a play to help somebody else out. Then they throw it right where they're supposed to be. Well, that didn't work. And so that's what we got to learn and we got to take from this. Just look, if somebody beats you, they beat you because they're better than you. Don't beat yourself. And that's what we did a lot on defense last week because we made too many mental mistakes. Tanitra? Oh, good. Thanks. We got time for one last question. Anybody? Or? All right, guys. Oh. Appreciate you as always. Thanks. Yeah. See ya. Thanks, Dane.